very weak on those teleconnections. We've shifted into MJO phase one. What does that mean? In the summer, the focus is on the south, where there's an inclination towards rainy conditions on the western Gulf Coast. But other than that, there is not really a very strong correlation with phase one. Activity is picking up in the Atlantic Basin. We've had Tropical Storm Dexter since Sunday night. It's currently north of Bermuda and moving east. The Cape Verde storm track that is picking up, but we're seeing very strong recurvature, which makes it less likely to affect the U.S. Another area of possible development off the Carolinas, a 40% chance of formation, but no major impacts expected. You may remember last week we asked, what was the worst hurricane to ever hit the Gulf of California? This is a plot showing all major hurricanes, Category 3 and above, in the Pacific Basin. We can see that many, many of them are off the coast of Mexico. Those tend to move westward. Very few of them make it into Baja California or the Gulf of California. One exception in 1976 was Hurricane Liza. There's a look at it on early GOES satellite imagery. This moved northward into the Gulf of California, passed about 50 miles east of Cabo San Lucas at Category 4 strength, entered the Gulf of California, made landfall near Los Mochis at Category 3 strength. It was the third deadliest East Pacific hurricane with over 1,200 killed. And I'll just refer you over to Wikipedia for the full story. Uh, congratulations goes to Dan Kabraman, 354, on the YouTube comments. He was the first to answer correctly. Looking at the weather across the U.S. this afternoon, we've got a large area of high pressure in the northeastern U.S. This is a Canadian air mass that's slowly modifying, and that's brought some wildfire smoke to the Great Lakes and New England. It was worse yesterday, but conditions are improving. Cool air flowing into the Midwest and southeastern U.S. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s in the Carolinas and in Georgia. Frontal boundary all the way to the Gulf Coast. And we find the true tropical air located in the southern plains. And some very dry air further to the west. Dew points in the teens and 20s. We're up to 111 at the uh, time of this map in Phoenix. Dew points 46, so that's kind of dry that's not associated with monsoon activity and there's another pacific air mass coming into the northwestern u.s bringing some somewhat milder conditions in the upper levels the big story is this large subtropical high up to 598 to 599 decameters by tomorrow we're going to briefly see the 600 decameter contour right there barely plots that the European model, a little bit more aggressive with that, painting a larger 600 decameter contour. And that is very rare. When I forecasted in the Air Force, I never saw a 600 at any point. But we've seen that a couple times in the past several years. I think uh, just a couple years ago, there was a example of one in the Northeast. I don't really remember the date. But this large 597, well, even that alone is indicating a very, very strong subtropical high, and that will gradually weaken towards the weekend. Now, in terms of anomalies and percentiles, this is a map for tomorrow at 18Z. There's the 500 millibar chart, and you can see that this area of red here that corresponds to an all-time maximum for, I think this is a moving uh, 20 or 30 day window somewhere in there. But relating that to what's in the database, this is at the all time maximums. The return interval on that is off the scale. So even without 600 decameters, this is a absurdly strong subtropical high. Focusing on the northeastern US, temperatures are near seasonal normals, mostly 70s and 80s though Virginia is a bit cooler. Canadian wildfire smoke, as we mentioned, causing problems in areas of New England and Ontario and Michigan, but overall a much 
better picture than what we had yesterday. And that's how it looked about 24 hours ago. Some very dense smoke across the Great Lakes into New York and New England. The southeastern U.S. continues to be rainy, especially in the Carolinas, Georgia, and around Jacksonville. Highs remained in the 60s today in western North Carolina, the 70s across the Piedmont all the way down to Atlanta in that rain-cooled air. Meanwhile, we saw 90s in the deep south and in Florida. The hot spot was Orlando. They were expecting 96 this afternoon. Flood watches continue for central Georgia and southeastern Alabama today. That's been extended into tomorrow as a moist air mass will remain in place. Additional showers and storms could produce up to 2.5 inches in most areas, with some isolated storms up to 6 inches. A heat advisory continues another day in southern Florida, including Miami, West Palm Beach, and Naples. Heat indexes will approach 110. Further west, heat advisories have begun appearing in West Texas and the Panhandles today as that ridge expands eastward. Heat advisories cover all of the Davis Mountains and the Big Bend today and tomorrow into Carlsbad and Roswell. Temperatures up to 105 are expected. And we have a heat advisory covering the northwestern Panhandles, including Amarillo, Dalhart, and Guymon. That's going to be on Wednesday, as the heat indexes will rise to 105. Checking out the northern plains, temperatures ranged from 80s in Minnesota to 90s out west in Colorado and the Black Hills. The Storm Prediction Center going for a slight risk that appears to cover those storms as well as the ones in the higher terrain and the Black Hills. The radar out of Aberdeen showing a very strong supercell just to the northwest over the border in North Dakota. This is tornado warned and looking at the velocity, some strong delta Vs within that showing a strong mesocyclone. This is sheer on the order of about 120 knots. So there is certainly the potential for tornadic activity and large hail. Looking at the southwest, a heat advisory takes effect Wednesday in the El Paso area, including southern New Mexico. Temperatures there will be up to 105. In the Arizona lower deserts and valleys, including southeastern Arizona, an extreme heat warning is in effect today through Friday. Temperatures will be in the 108 to 118 range. That extends into all of the California deserts into 29 palms and needles. Temperatures up to 118 as well. There are some storms going up, so the monsoon is not totally shut down. It is confined to the Nogales area and the Mogollon Rim, maybe into the Painted Desert. And we are heading into a heat wave later in the week, especially Thursday. We may see 117 at Phoenix, which would tie the all-time record for August. Here's a look at the official forecast highs. This is not model data. This is actual forecast high temperatures from the Weather Service. So we're looking at today, highs up to 113 at Phoenix. For tomorrow, it gets a little bit warmer, up to 116 at Phoenix and 117 at Needles. And then for Thursday, this is going to be the hottest day, 117 to 118 through a large chunk of the deserts, as high as 117 at Phoenix, 109 for Las Vegas, and near 100 in the southern San Joaquin Valley. And also what's notable is very hot temperatures spreading into the Four Corners and Central Rockies. We're looking for 100 at Grand Junction, 89 at Salida, 88 at Alamosa, and up to 105 at La Junta and Lamar. 100 at Albuquerque, 101 at Farmington. So the effects are going to be pretty far-reaching, even for the higher terrain and the mountain valleys. A little bit of relief on Friday. We bump those numbers downwards, and for Saturday and Sunday, we start dropping into the lower 110s around Phoenix and a more pleasant 80s and 90s in Colorado. And also a major fire underway in northwestern Colorado, putting out a smoke plume that is passing over Fort Collins, Boulder, and probably making its way to Denver. This is the Elk, RBX, and Lee fires. There's two of them near Meeker, Colorado. 
And of course, when we're talking about a stronger than normal high pressure area, that implies a stronger than normal west to east gradient north of that high. So that is partly responsible for the blustery, windy conditions through the central Rockies. In the Pacific Northwest, I suppose no news is good news. A bit cooler in Seattle, 76 for a high, 80s through Oregon into Idaho, and a weather system lurking just off the Pacific coast. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. We head out west into the Pacific, couple fronts off of the northwest coast, a stronger one off of Vancouver Island, ushering in some cooler air working southward down the west Canadian coast. In Alaska, some mild weather, even 70s around the Seward Peninsula, much cooler up in the North Slope area, and a burst of cold air pushing through the Northwest Territories and bringing those temperatures down. The wildfire smoke advisories have been dropped for the Northwest Territories. In Nunavut, however, there's that wildfire smoke all across Hudson Bay. So they have smoke warnings all from Arviat to Repulse Bay and Coral Harbor. In British Columbia, we have a severe thunderstorm watch around the Penticton and Vernon area this afternoon. Many of the interior valleys also have advisories for wildfire smoke, including Kamloops, Williams Lake, and Prince George. In the prairies, wildfire smoke warnings continue for northern Saskatchewan and northern Manitoba. A severe thunderstorm watch is in effect for southeastern Saskatchewan and southwest Manitoba. Further east, a heat warning is in effect along the Ontario Hudson Bay coast near Fort Severn. Highs will reach the mid-80s through Wednesday, and we already have 86 at Churchill, the polar bear capital of, I guess, the world. Anyway, no problems in the eastern cities except for wildfire smoke, mostly around Toronto and Ottawa, getting some clearing out there in the St. Lawrence Gulf area. So let's take a look at the forecast. A good start to seeing what's going on is looking at the upper air chart or actually the 500 millibar and we see that strong subtropical high right there for tonight and over the next few days that will weaken by the time we get up to sunday just not much of it left in fact things in the north central u.s dominated by this big trough as we go into next week we see a new subtropical high reestablish itself over the southeastern U.S., not much for the southwest deserts. But if we go all the way to the extended, and I don't have those charts here, around uh, August 17th or 18th, we are going to see the subtropical high possibly reestablish itself over the Four Corners area. That may allow a little bit of easterly flow into Arizona, which is good for getting storms into the Phoenix area. We'll just have to see how that works out because that's pretty far out. And let's take a look at those monsoon graphics. Large 700 millibar high, and that pretty much keeps things shut down. Not completely, but we don't have those 50s and 60s dew points that we had a couple weeks ago. A little bit of relief comes up for Friday and Saturday. We start to bring this surge of 50s and 60s dew points northward. So that will be accompanied by an increase in precipitation into the weekend. And then here's next week. Pretty much the same story, and we are lacking a high-pressure area to keep things shut down. And for the end of the chart sequence late next week, pretty much the same story, kind of a weak southerly flow into the state, and then we'll probably see that subtropical high rebuilding in this area and bring a little bit of easterly flow through this area. So let's quickly take a look at that forecast starting out with tonight and going into tomorrow. So this is going to be tomorrow afternoon and evening. Warm front lifting up through the northern plains. This front remains stalled out along the Gulf Coast. 100s will be expanding out into the central plains and into west Texas. We'll see 100s from Midland to Amarillo and Dodge City. 100s in southeast Colorado as well. A marginal risk will cover much of the northern plains from Minnesota to western Iowa, South Dakota, and Nebraska. 
all along that warm front. Hazards will be confined mostly to isolated strong wind and large hail. Then for Thursday, much the same. This high pressure area is slow to move out. This warm front also slow to move in. So by evening, we're going to be seeing a marginal risk in the western Dakotas and Montana, close to this low pressure area. The hazards mostly isolated strong wind and large hail. 100s continue expanding into the central plains, reaching all the way from Midland up to Amarillo and all the way up north into Goodland and Rapid City. 98 once again for Denver. Thursday, of course, this is where we see the worst of the heat wave in Arizona, the Four Corners, and Colorado. In the mountains, we're going to be seeing 91 at Salida, 80 at Breckenridge, 77 at Telluride, and 76 at Leadville. And finally, some relief on the way for Friday as this strong cold advection works through the northwestern high plains and into much of the north central U.S. over the weekend. It does not advance very far south. In fact, you can see it stalling out right here. Very little progress until Monday and Tuesday. Finally, a wave up north picks up the northern periphery of that boundary, but very little of it moves south. And it just serves as a focus for a multi-day precipitation event through the Central Plains, which is good for the agriculture industry there. Then for midweek next week, an even stronger push of cold air comes south, but that one stalls out as well. And that will do it for this episode of Forecast Lab. Unfortunately, the cross-sections have not completed generating, so we're going to have to bring those back on Friday. Special thanks to Michael Riley stepping up to the plate and making sure these episodes keep coming out. Also thanks to David S., David Rice, and Eddie Holmes. Thank you very much for that support. All right, we'll be back on Friday for another edition. Hopefully we'll see you then. Bye-bye.